Let's talk about how to do right angles. A few simple things. Um, I'm going to change colors. Um, a few simple things about writing groups that will help your writing group be more effective. What you're going to do is you're going to submit your thousand words on, what do I say, Monday night? Yeah, Monday night. Okay? If your internet goes out, go to your roommate or to the next door neighbors, to your parents' house and post it, okay? Just get it up there by Wednesday morning um, so, your, so your group can have time to read it. You're going to read their submission of a thousand words, and you're going to take some notes. I want you to come with things to say, okay? Don't just say, it's good, okay? No, it's good. Blah. That's useless. Not helpful. Um, what are you going to do? You are going to take specific notes on what you liked. Okay? Saying it's good is useless. Saying, this character is really engaging to me and I want to see where they go. This other character was not so engaged with me. I can't even re really remember who they are. They're not very memorable. Those are two excellent comments for, from a writing group. You should is a bad comment. Okay? No. You are not telling them how to write their book. You are giving feedback. Remember, you will treat yourself when you're reading their, um, their piece, like sometimes they'll show test um, show movies to like a test audience to judge their reaction. At that point, you know, the test audience is not saying, you know, Mr. Lucas, I really think that you should, no, they're saying, yeah, I had fun here, I was bored here. That's what you're looking to give them, okay? So, number one, remember to give good um, feedback. Uh, what, what I mean by that is remember to say good things too, okay? Um, remember to say, take notes on what you liked about it in specifics. So two, be specific. Three, learn how to write, Brandon. Um, be specific. Number three, be descriptive. Not proscriptive. Okay? This one's very hard to get down, but it's going to be a really great tool for you. And all feedback to writers you know, um, describing your reaction to it is so much more useful than saying, this is what's wrong with it. Okay? The reason for that is many fold. Number one, it's not so argumentative, which is good. You're critiquing someone's baby, someone's personal writing. And so saying, I was a little bit bored here is actually going to be easier on them than saying, you should make this more exciting. Um, plus, it's actually more truthful. <clears throat> At some points, they may want you to be bored. I don't know, but they might want you to be bored. They're like, this character is a boring character, and <clears throat> I want you to read this and be like, all right, get, get, get on with it, get on with it, like the character is feeling. There are times when they want you to be bored. So rather, if you say, make this more exciting, you may be undermining what they're actually trying to do. Now, most of the time, they're not going to write a boring character intentionally, but they may write an annoying character intentionally. I've done it before, okay? Um, and they may want you to be a little confused about something because they're going to pow you with an explanation in the next scene, and it's all going to come together. So telling them, I'm confused here, is actually more useful because they're like, okay, let's see if the next scene clears that up, or if they're still confused, because sometimes a little bit of confusion is good. Sometimes a little bit, you know, uh, uh, sometimes the anticipation is good. Gee, I really want to have the answer to this. That's a good thing. Rather, but if the writer's saying, you should answer this right now, you need to answer this right now, that can be the wrong advice, because anticipation is what makes us keep reading. Okay? So, be descriptive. Be specific. Remember to give good feedback. Um, and number four, ignore... Wow, this is really bad writing. Um, I'll make that word least readable. Ignore the small stuff. Um, ignore things that are little. Don't tell them when they spell the word wrong. Ignore that. By sitting on your writing group and your your first leading comment is, you know, I think you're I think you're using the word and too much. I'm gonna throw something at you, okay? Maybe at the end of the session, that's something you can mention, but you need to lead with plot, characters, and setting, okay? Don't 
we'll talk about the pros unless it's a big issue. If they're using the passive voice a ton, that's something you can bring up. But let's lead with the big things and then start talking about the pros, okay? Uh, pros is important, but the, the worry is that if people start focusing too much on sentence level things, this is all going to get revised and rewritten anyway, and we want to be focusing in this level. This is alpha reads. This is early draft. Everyone's writing is going to be rough because you won't have time to revise it. And so there's going to be lots of typos. There's going to be lots of awkward sentence constructions, um, and that's just how it's going to be, and it's okay. All right? So save that stuff to the end if you have to do it, okay? Don't lead with it. Now, if you're being workshop, there's one big rule. I'm going to enforce this one, and it will also make me throw things at you. So I want you to write it in big letters. No talking. If you are being workshop, you are not allowed to speak. Let me say it again. If you are being workshop, you cannot say a word. Every time I tell this to people, I'll go sit in their writing groups, and everyone has ignored it. This is your hard, fast rule. When it's your turn, shut up. Okay? There's really good reasons for this. Everybody who talks about workshops mentions it. Um, your job is to be the person with the clipboard standing at the back of that movie theater while people are watching and writing down, ooh, they said awe ah, here. Ooh, they were excited here. Oh, they look a little bit bored. Your job is not to say, hey guys, this really does work. Just wait, I promise you. Or, no, no, it's really quite brilliant. If you see this thing and this thing and this thing, it's going to prove how smart I am, okay? That's what you're doing when you're talking, okay? Even if you think you aren't, that's what you're doing. Um, what it's doing is it's, number one, it's biasing the reader. When you're saying, yeah, that gets fixed next chapter, you've just biased your readers and diluted your, your, um, the, the quality of your feedback, okay? You want them next week to say, well, I found out the answer to that, and it actually now all works. That's what you want to hear. Or you want them to hear, yeah, the answer came, but I was confused because... You know, it just didn't come soon enough. You want to hear those things, okay? You also don't want to put people into an argumentative mindset. You don't want to defend yourself. And not talking is the best way to avoid defending yourself. Because if someone says, you know, I just didn't think this character is really interesting, you're like, but they're fascinating, you know? <laughs> they, they lead a life of, uh, of danger and crime. They're really interesting. They're the best character I've ever written. I think you're stupid. Um, <laughs> when you start saying these things, you're going to be... Fostering an environment where people stop giving you good feedback. So, really, I'm serious about this. Don't talk when it's your turn. I will make an allowance for, at the end of the session, if you have a question or two that you want to direct, it, direct the conversation toward, at the end of your 10 minutes, you can do that. But there's usually not much time for it, and you should really not pretend I didn't even say that, okay? Um, you can do it if you need to. But let's really just avoid saying anything when it's your time to turn into workshop. You'll find that the workshop is much better if you um, avoid saying anything. Now, the thing to keep in mind is I generally suggest outside of this class that people workshop pieces that they have completed. I'm not letting you do that in this class. So be aware of the whole, gee, that'd be cool possibility, okay? If people are not being prescriptive, you're not going to have as much problem with that if they're being descriptive. But still, resist the urge to let your writer brew in your book because they'll try to. They'll give you good feedback and can make it much better, but they'll also kind of try to ruin it. Because they'll try to make it, particularly with newer writers, they'll try to make your book into the type of book they would write rather than the type of book that you want to write. And they'll do this kind of unconsciously. Now, as workshoppers, when you're giving your feedback, try to look at what the book is trying to be and try to gear your feedback toward what the book is trying to be rather than what you want it to be. Don't try and take their teen paranormal romance and just because you know you don't like teen paranormal romance, try to turn it into something else. I will try to group the writing groups so similar interested people are together in writing groups, so that shouldn't happen as much. But just keep that in mind, all right? And when you're being workshop, write down their feedback Put it on a, a piece of paper, and then set it aside for when you do your revision of the book. When you do your revision of the book, look back at the feedback, read the scene again, having had that distance and probably having finished a lot more of the book, and then you can decide which of this feedback is going to work for you and which of it isn't. 
Most of the feedback that's going to work, you're going to be like, yeah, that's really right. Um, and after you know several weeks of, of working on this and being farther ahead, you realize, yeah, I can fix this. This can. This is really good feedback. This is much better. Some of it will just be dumb, um, and that's okay. We all give dumb feedback sometimes because we don't know where the book is going and things like that. And so, don't worry about that. I usually take one in three suggestions that my writer makes. Um, maybe one in two. Probably more one in two. Um, but I have uh, I have two full time professional writers in my writing group with me, um, and they make really good comments. So. Uh, for that, keep take that for what it's worth. So, there's your uh, there's your workshopping. Um, yeah. Um, you remember Kevin, but Kevin gave me advice about comments. He said if, if you're doubting something, don't teach it. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, that's Stephen King's advice too. And on writing, he says generally, if someone makes a comment and he is uncertain about it, he ignores it. Unless two or three people start making the same comment, then he gives it more serious thought. Uh, but if it's your opinion versus one person's opinion, it's your book, so don't change it. And this is how our mind writing group works really well. Sit down, number one, there's a leader, starts the time clock, just doesn't, can't hold it up for people, but keeps an eye on the clock and says, all right, let's start just with, you know, one person. We're going to start with Katie. All right, we're going to start with Katie's piece. Who had, what, what good things, what did you like about this? And then we get into the specifics of what people liked for just a couple of minutes, with anyone throwing something out as a group discussion. Then leader says, okay, let's move on to things that could use work. What things did you feel, you know, what were your emotions on this that you feel um, were weakness of the piece? Where were you bored? Where were you confused? This sort of thing. People start throwing them out. They should have come with them prepared. Don't do your reading in class. Um, read before. If you do your reading in class, it doesn't count. You, um, you don't get points for that. And this is, by the way, all honor system. Um, I hope that you're not, you know, cheating in, um, at the Lord's University um, <laughs> on your honor for a, a class that doesn't even really matter for your, um, <laughs> for your, for your major or for anything. It's an elective, um, so it's not worth it. Just um, besides, I'm a pushover. I'm not going to fail you. Um, um, anyway, then go into a discussion of what the major things is. Lead with the biggest things. Work your way down to smaller issues. And if you don't have time for the smallest ones, just move on when that clock hits 10 minutes to go.